All right. Well, welcome, everybody. We're really excited to have you out for uh, continuing in our series with the IACAC uh, and our virtual college exploration uh, program. Uh, we've been going on for a few weeks here. And tonight, uh, we're really excited to offer you the student experience uh, specifically to Western Illinois University. So we thank you for joining us. Uh, we got a whole big panel we're about to introduce you to. But before I do, I want to get, take care of a couple of housekeeping things. First of all, my name is Scott Lilly. I'm the college counselor over at Glenbard East in Lombard in the western suburbs of Chicago. Uh, and I'm here to host you tonight. Uh, when we're doing our, our program tonight, just want to give you a heads up. Um, the Q&A is live. So please, if you got any questions at any point, put that in. Our uh, panelists will be taking a look at that as we go, and they'll be able to respond to your questions. So if you got any questions, just put them right in there, because your microphones and your cameras will be remain off the entire time. Um, I also want to do a quick plug, uh, let you know that this is one of many events. I think we had over 370 sessions over our entire program. So I want to encourage you to back on IACC's website and maybe sign up for our additional sessions coming up or go back and view some of our previous sessions we've been doing for the past few weeks, which also reminds me that we are recording this session. So if you want to go back and watch this again or share it with your friends who might be looking for similar information, we encourage you to do so. So that's enough from me. I'm going to hand it over to my good friend, Sean. Uh, and Cam, I'm gonna go ahead and stop sharing here so that you can go ahead and start sharing your screen. Uh, and this is Sean Walkner, admissions rep for Western Illinois. Sean, take it away, my friend. All right, thank you very much, Scott. We do greatly um, appreciate the intro here this evening. Um, hello, everyone, again, uh, my name is Sean Walkner. I serve as a regional admissions counselor for Western Illinois University. And we've got um, a great team assembled here for you tonight. Um, I believe we're going to have our panelists introduce themselves as they start um, and give their part of the presentation. I think that'll save just a little bit of time. Um, so, Cam, if you want to scroll to the next slide. All right. I am up first. Um, so I'm here, again, to talk to you guys about the admissions process and how all of that works. Um, really quickly, my territory or the region I serve um, is really the northwest suburbs of Chicago. So I work with McHenry County, Kane County, Kendall County, um, the north half of DuPage County, so north of I-88, um, Grundy County, and districts 211 and 214. So what I want to do is talk to you first about a little bit about our admissions process. In terms of how to apply to the university, we, we have our own application. So you will not find us on Common App. You will not find us on Coalition. So you will need to just go to the, the Western website, which is wiu.edu. And then in the upper right-hand corner of every page there, you will see a button that says Apply Now. When you click on that, it'll take you directly into our application for admission. I can tell you it is purely demographic name, address, phone number, email, high school, what do you want to study, parents, information. There are no essays and no letters of recommendation required for our application for admission. We do have a $30 application fee. Um, if you happen to be on the free or reduced lunch program, you can talk to your high school counselor about receiving a waiver form for that application fee. We do ask that you submit an official semester or sixth semester transcript. So at the end of your junior year um, for us to, to evaluate. And what we look at when we are evaluating your application for admission um, is we are looking for students who are on a 4.0 scale to have at least a 2.75 cumulative GPA. But if your school happens to be on a five point scale, that GPA requirement would be a 3.4375 for automatic admission. Students who are at or above that criteria will, will without a doubt be admitted to the university. Students who fall below that criteria would be reviewed through our REACH process and might be asked to submit supplemental information. Those students who are admitted, it's important to know that we do have several automatic scholarships. The first is our Western Commitment Scholarship Program. And what Western Commitment Scholarship Program says is any student at or above a 
cumulative GPA will receive automatic merit scholarship. These scholarships range anywhere between $3,000 and $8,000 and are good for four years at Western Illinois. We have other scholarships that are dependent um, on, be, on alumni status. So if either your parent or grandparent was a Western alum, we do have automatic scholarships for that. We have some location-based scholarships, depending if you're from Chicago area, St. Louis area, around our local territory in the Macomb and Rock Island County areas. Um, we also have a visit scholarship. So if you're able to come to campus and visit um, Western Illinois University, which we are doing individualized personal tours, um, we have a scholarship for that as well. The last thing I wanna to touch on is who is a successful Leatherneck? I um, mean, we find the students that are most successful on our campus are those students that are highly involved on campus. In fact, our housing department studies our freshman class and last fall, so fall of 2019, students living on campus who were involved in at least one activity within the first three weeks had an average GPA of 2.9 versus those students who went to school and then right back to their residence hall room, did not engage, had an average GPA of a 2.1. So again, the successful Leatherneck is one that wants to truly engage with campus. And that's what this presentation tonight is truly all about. So what I wanna do now is turn it over to Audrey um, to talk a little bit about our housing process. Awesome, thank you, Sean. Hello, everybody. My name is Audrey Barrientos, and I am an admissions counselor for us at Western. And I serve students in um, southern parts of DuPage County, Will County, West Suburban Cook County, and kind of like the center of the city. So um, that's kind of where I, I'm at in terms of being regionally based and serving students. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about housing on campus. So when we're talking about our campus locations, we have two, the two locations, the campus in Macomb, Illinois, and then the campus in the Quad Cities. And our Macomb campus is our traditional campus. So this is our campus with the, the residence halls or the dorms, as you may more commonly know them as. And so the Macomb campus for students that are around 60 miles or less um, in terms of at close to campus, they can live off campus. However, if our students are coming from farther away, we do require them to live on campus for their first two years, okay? We've got six residence halls in Macomb. Uh, there's many, many options in terms of how you can live on campus. You can request to live by yourself. You can request to live with someone that you know, or we have this amazing program called Roommate Matching, where you can basically fill out a personality profile, create an anonymous username, and utilize the system to have a more active role in choosing who you live with. And so it's really a great option for students to kind of get to know that person before they move into a potentially smallish space with them. So that's something that students really love to utilize. And within the residence halls, we have uh, same gender floors, we have mixed gender floors, we have open gender floors, and also we have options for you to live on a floor with people who are studying the same or similar things. We call those living and learning communities. Not every one of our 60 plus majors has a living and learning community, but many do. So examples of majors or programs that you can be a part of where you can live on the floor with other people who have that uh, same major or a similar program involvement are things like our honors college, our ROTC program, our broadcasting majors, students studying fine arts, students studying um, business. So those are a few of, of many more examples. You do not have to do that, but it is a nice option for students to instantly kind of have something in common with the students you're gonna be living with in the residence hall. Now, in terms of dining on our Macomb campus, uh, we can promise that you will be eating well at Western. Our food is, is lovely. I th we think it's very good. The students can probably chime in a little bit more on their experience there. Your meals are included with the total cost of tuition. So if you receive scholarships, financial aid, et cetera, those can help pay for your dining plan. But just generally speaking, the Macomb campus has two dining centers located within two of our residence halls. It's got four convenience stores, a coffee shop, and then two restaurants. We have a Chick-fil-A 
and an Einstein bagel that's right in the center of our campus. Now our Quad Cities campus, which is located in Molina, Illinois, if you're not familiar with it, um, that campus is non-residential. So typically students that are attending that campus are commuting from home or commuting from local apartments or, or rental properties. However, if a student wanted to go there and have that community living experience, there is an option that's very, very close to campus, just literally across, across the path uh, called the waterfront where students can live off campus. So many off campus options, but it won't give you that traditional kind of residential dorm room feel. Um, and that's one of the bigger distinguishing factors between our two campuses. And with regards to food on that campus, there's no meal plan that you have to pay for, which is nice because it'll save you a little bit of money. However, they in non-COVID times, they do have um, food vendors that come in a couple times a week from local area restaurants. I believe last year there was a pita place and a Mexican place that would come in and students that are on campus can buy their food um, and not have to leave the building. So that's a great option for students living or attending the Quad Cities campus. All right, so now I'm gonna pass it over to Sharon and she's gonna tell you a little bit more about our multicultural center. Hello everyone, my name is Sharon Hunter. I am the admissions counselor for transfer students with the territory on the Southern part of the state, including two schools in Iowa. And it is my pleasure to present to you our multicultural center. The multicultural center is home to the Casa Latina Cultural Center, the Gwendolyn Brooks Center, the LGBTQA Resource Center, the Women's Center as well. The MCC aims to advance the goals of educational, social, and cultural awareness by providing resources to enhance the campus community's understanding and appreciation for all identities. Within each compartment of the MCC, we of course have these centers which of course have the student organizations that are advised by our WIU faculty and staff members. The legacy events are included along with the initiatives. The Casa Latina Cultural Center is a home away from home for students of all backgrounds with programs and student organizations highlighting the Latin America and indigenous cultures with six organizations four legacy events and two initiatives with one of their main events being their recognition banquet. Next is the Gwendolyn Brooks Cultural Center, which is committed to helping the campus community adjust to a multicultural and multiracial society, regardless of race, age, or economic status. Holding eight student organizations three legacy events, one being the Kwanzaa dinner, and then one initiative called the Feel Good Friday. Our LGBTQ Resource Center is a space for students to become visible and form connections with queer community at WIU and in Macomb with one of their really big uh, events called the Unity, which is the student organization, along with five legacy events and three initiatives. Then last but certainly not least, we have the Women's Center. The Women's Center is a space to celebrate women and we welcome students of all genders. Our goal is to empower and provide support for students with five student organizations, four legacy events and two initiatives, one being the Women's Wednesday. To see about this center, you can contact Rocio Ochoa or Carl Irving, Carl Irving. Now we will pass it on to Sarah Gibson. All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sarah Gibson, and I am also an admissions counselor here at Western Illinois University. The area I serve is primarily Wisconsin, parts of Indiana, and then pretty much all other out-of-state territories. So if you're out of Illinois, you're probably with me. Um, and today I wanna to talk to you a little bit about the study abroad opportunities that Western Illinois University has for you. So first of all, what is study abroad? Um, for those of you who don't know, study abroad means 
that you continue to be a Western Illinois University student, but you take some classes at a university in another country that we at Western have an agreement with. So you're not transferring out of Western, you're still considered a Western student, um, and you just take your classes outside of the US for a little bit. So the length of time that you choose to do this is really up to you and your particular comfort level. So maybe you are a seasoned traveler, you feel very comfortable, you've been abroad or to another country before, maybe even on your own, and you want to try to do this for a full year. Well, you can absolutely do that here at Western. Maybe you've never traveled before. Maybe you don't have a lot of experience being on your own. Maybe you're a little bit more apprehensive about doing something um, for that length of time. We have programs for you as well, where you can go with a faculty member and a group of other students from Western Illinois University and actually travel around and have an itinerary set um, and be led by a faculty member for as little as one week over spring break. We have a lot of spring break options that students take advantage of. So it really is up to you. You can go over the summer for four weeks. You can go for a full semester, a full year, one week. Um, it's really up to you and your comfort level in that, in that way. And we do have over 60 destinations to choose from. So I have seen study abroad courses go to places such as Australia and Brazil. Spain. Spain is where I studied abroad when I was an undergrad, so I have some great experiences doing that. Um, we have a program in Costa Rica, Germany, England, Ecuador, and so much more. So uh, basically you name it and we can make it happen. There are a lot of opportunities um, that you can take advantage of when it comes to studying abroad. You can do the traditional study abroad, which is basically you go, you take classes, you're just like a regular college student there, um, along with all the other college students attending that university. Or you can do your internship abroad. So I've known a lot of places, um, especially in our law enforcement program, where uh, the student does their internship, for example, in Australia. Uh, or you can take advantage of doing some service learning or volunteer work as well. So those are some options for you when it comes to kind of the what you're going to do when you're abroad, but how are you going to pay for it, right? I think one of the biggest misconceptions about studying abroad is that uh, it's too expensive, I can't afford it, but that's actually not the case. We have so many agreements with colleges and universities around the world where you end up just paying Western's tuition and fees, just like you would if you were to stay here, but then you go take classes over in the other country. So that's a really, really good deal to take advantage of. We even have some options that end up being a little bit cheaper than it would be if you were to stay here um, at Western. So there's lots of affordability options. Um, there's also lots of scholarships available to students who wish to study abroad. Um, so why should you study abroad? There are so many benefits that come out of studying abroad and, and I'm living proof of that because Studying abroad changed me as a person. It helped me to get jobs. Um, it helped me to build connections of people and places that I never would have built connections with. These days, most employers are looking for someone who has intercultural communication skills. You are going to be working with people around the world. This is a global society at this point, right? And it's made it a lot easier to communicate and to work with other people because of the technology that we have. So for that reason, employers are looking for global citizens, for people who have those skills um, in order to be able to effectively work with people from other cultures and other backgrounds that are different from themselves. So if you study abroad, you truly will have a leg up in the job industry. Um, but Studying abroad isn't the only thing that you can do at Western. Uh, we also have plenty of activities and events available for you right here on campus, but both Macomb and Quad Cities. So I will pass it over to Sean to talk a little bit about more of those, of those activities. All right, thank you, Sarah. Um, as I mentioned on the, the admission slide, a lot of our student life really begins in the residence halls. Um, so there's, there's things like hall government. They are the 
the, the center motherboard really of, of all notification. Whenever you, you walk to your elevator, there's gonna be just flyers um, all over the, the walls by your elevators. And that's gonna happen throughout the academic buildings as well. These flyers are gonna have information on all of our 250 different student organizations, their events, their happenings, things going on. Um, we have organizations based on ethnicity, gender, political affiliation, religious affiliation, major minor, honorary groups, student leadership groups, volunteer organizations, fraternities, sororities, tons of different ways for you to get involved. Um, through leadership and service, we offer student government association. Um, our, our past president at Western used to always say um, that our, our university is student led. So they would create initiatives through student government and take those on to the administration for the administration to, to implement when they could. Some of our, our service learning, um, Sarah mentioned some spring break opportunities. One thing we do um, very heavily at Western is alternative spring break, where you go and you do a community service project. Um, sometimes these happen in the United States. Other times these could be study abroad trips. Um, we have a group called WAVE, which is Western's all volunteer effort. So again, if you're into that community building, that volunteering, um, you certainly have those opportunities as well. Through Greek life, um, fraternities and sororities, we, we've got about 30 different options for you. Um, for males, we have 12 different fraternities. For the women, we have six different sororities. And then we, we have an additional 11 student organizations, which are multicultural Greek organizations. Most of those are co-ed, but some of them are going to be either male or female. But again, a lot of the multicultural National Panhellenic Council Greek organizations are, are going to be co-ed. Um, programming, we do a ton of different programming at Western. Um, we have a group called the University Union Board, whose job it is is really to do a lot of the campus programming. These are a lot of the flyers that you'll see um, around campus. Uh, the day you move in, we do an event called Rocky After Dark. I, I always date myself and say, if you've ever seen the movie Grease, and you in the very last scene when they run outside to a huge carnival, we, that's what we do, except on the day you move in. Um, you can see some pictures on the slide here. Um, again, you've got like the double, double sided Ferris wheel. These are some of the different things that we do during move in weekend. We, we put on a nine day homecoming event. We have family weekend, siblings weekend, then we have a separate mom's weekend, a separate dad's weekend, always something going on on campus. Um, at Western, I always like to say that we have three tiers of athletic involvement. Um, and it all starts at our Student Recreation Center. This is a 100,000 square foot fitness club right on campus, absolutely free to students. We have a, a pool, hot tub, sauna, whirlpool, racquetball courts, basketball courts. We have a weight room, the length and a half and just as wide as a basketball court with every kind of weightlifting apparatus imaginable, a walking, jogging track, cardio equipment, breakout rooms um, where they'll do group exercise. Um, so that is a huge part of our, our campus life. Um, campus Rec will house our intramural program, which is campus-based athletic competition. So you're going to grab your friends from the floor, your friends from class, or your friends from your student activity, student organization, and you're going to do things like dodgeball, kickball, wiffle ball, flag football, softball, scooter racing. They've done kayak racing in the pool before. So again, tons of different ways to get students involved. We have sports clubs on campus, which th this level will compete against other colleges and universities wearing a Western Illinois uniform. A lot of them compete for national championships. And then the ultimate pinnacle level is our NCAA Division I athletics. Um, we, we've got 17 different varsity sports. If you are interested in, in being recruited, we ask that you go through, first of all, the NCAA Eligibility Center and then fill out one of our, our athletic recruit forms on our website. Um, at this point, I would like to kick it over to Cam, who's gonna to talk to you a little bit about life in the Quad Cities. 
Awesome, Sean. Thank you. As he said, uh, my name is Cameron. I am an admissions counselor, obviously, at Western here. I've been doing this for a year now. Um, I cover um, Northern Illinois territories. I get into Iowa and all of the high schools in the Quad Cities. Um, I'm also an alum. I um, actually attended the Quad Cities campus. So I'm really going to um, try to come at this from a student perspective, if I can, um, and talk about how getting involved on a college campus completely changed uh, my college experience. So first, I just want to put into context the difference between the two campuses. Most of what we've talked about previously um, is dealing with what we have at our Macomb campus. So um, a lot of students still don't realize that we have our Quad Cities campus in Moline, about an hour and 15 minutes north of the Macomb campus. And the way I like to look at it is Macomb being our traditional larger campus in a smaller community and our Quad Cities campus being a smaller, more laid back um, uh, non-traditional campus, um, non-residential campus in a larger metro area with the Quad Cities having around 400,000 people. So different ways to get involved. Um, a lot of those have to do with um, student-driven opportunities, not just on campus, but in the community. So what you might have more of on campus in Macomb, um, you have more of an opportunity at the Quad Cities campus than to get involved in the community with more connections potentially being in the Quad Cities with it being a larger region. Um, so first I want to start with um, student employment. Um, that was a game changer for me and I don't think a lot of students take this into account as a way to get involved on campus. Um, but from what I've seen at, at our campus, this is a way to not only connect with other students that are on campus, but it's a really nice way to connect with professionals on campus who can open doors for you down the road. Um, so at our campus specifically, getting involved um, working in the library or working with student services. Um, those options are also um, open to you at our Macomb campus on a larger scale as well, uh, working in the admissions office or something like that. Um, but our Quad Cities campus, um, that is something I got involved with early on, uh, working on campus in student services, and it was much more than filing papers away. Um, I was actually able to, to get some hands-on experience with public speaking, which was huge for me because that's what I'm doing right now. <laughs> um, so that was huge for me, just being able to witness professionals in action, um, getting to know different people was huge for me as a student. So completely changed my, um, my college experience. So I, I would highly suggest if you can start working on campus in some way, earn some money, build those connections and, and add to your resume. Um, and then student organizations was something else um, I was able to get involved with um, at the Quad Cities campus, again, on a smaller scale. Um, seeing as we're not as, as big as the Macomb campus. Um, but most of our majors that we have at the Quad Cities campus have a student organization that's associated with them for. So for example, um, engineering has ACE, the academic club for engineering, psychology has psych club, so on and so forth. Um, for me, I was a liberal arts major. Um, so we had the liberal arts and sciences student organization that I got involved with. Um, and something students don't realize getting involved with a student organization or a student group or a club, taking on a leadership position is actually a way to earn money. So you can earn a talent grant by, by doing that. Um, so I actually climbed up the ranks in my uh, student organization, ended up being the president, took on those responsibilities of that student organization and was able to earn a talent grant um, each semester. So uh, that went a long way for me. But again, I'll go back to making the connections with fellow students um, and, and connecting with faculty and staff. Each student organization will have a faculty member um, that advises it. Um, and I was able to meet multiple faculty members, multiple staff members, and some of the things that we were doing in our student group. Um, as I mentioned earlier, student groups um, on our campus, um, well, our, the things that we do on our campus are, are highly student driven because we're a smaller campus. We really rely a lot of times for programming on our student organizations to put on events. Um, so again, you're going to get that hands-on experience um, of putting on an event, coordinating, planning, all of that, um, and then getting involved in the community as well in terms of volunteer experiences um, and things like that. So again, it's much more than uh, meeting once a month just to talk about what's going on. Um, you're actually getting together uh, to plan and coordinate things on campus, um, which can be tough on a smaller um, commuter campus because most of, most of our students um, drive to, to campus, go to class, and they go home. Um, 
so there is some added pressure to some of our student groups um, to do that programming and, and recruit and get students in, involved in the programming on campus. But from what I've seen, our student organizations do a really good job um, of galvanizing our campus community um, pre-COVID um, and, and getting people on campus and involved in, in ways um, that I, I didn't realize was possible before I came to WIU. So some of the things that we were doing were casino nights, uh, trivia nights, um, we did our own homecoming event at our campus that coincided with the homecoming events going on in Macomb. So again, I just want to reiterate to students who think, well, it's a smaller, you know, non-traditional campus. There's probably not much going on. There's actually a lot going on if you want to get involved um, and gain experience, uh, meet with new people um, and build those connections. I can't, I can't say enough about how that experience um, kind of changed me and my experience as a student and a person. So um, the last thing I want to touch on in terms of student groups and clubs, uh, Sean mentioned um, some of the athletic clubs, which we don't have. Um, we do have our esports group that I want to touch on. Um, as you can see, the pictures on the right there, um, that is our esports team that was started uh, a couple of years ago. Um, but that room that you see in the top right has over $15,000 worth of gaming equipment in it. Um, and those students that are part of the esports club. Um, go uh, and participate in tournaments. They were actually in Bloomington participating in a tournament at the, a state, far, the state farm arena down there. Um, and then weekly they're, they're competing with other colleges um, in, in different video games that I don't understand as well. So, um, but anybody can be a part of it. Um, before COVID was a thing, they would have weekly game nights where they got pizzas and there's other things to do in there like Mario Kart and other video game consoles that you can take advantage of. It's open to anyone. Um, if you wanted to, to be on the team and actually compete, they do actually officially have a tryout. Um, so that, that's start, starting to be a popular thing amongst uh, colleges across um, the country. So that is my spiel on what we have going on at the Quad Cities campus. Um, definitely wanted to leave some time for for some Q&A and I know we do have some uh, two student reps um, that I would like to go ahead and have them introduce themselves. If um, Lexi, you could go ahead and start. And again, I just wanna reiterate, feel free to drop your questions in the chat box and we will, we will get to those for you. Hello, um, my name is Lexi. I'm a sophomore here at Western. I'm from Bartlett, Illinois. I'm about four hours away from the Macomb campus. Um, a few things I'm involved in on campus is I'm an undergraduate admissions ambassador um, for admi the admissions office at Western. I am also on the executive board for our Rockython organization that we have here, as well as I'm a part of Greek Life. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Derek Johnson. Uh, I'm from Brookville, Illinois, a junior. Uh, a few things that I'm into on campus. Uh, I'm also a uh, undergraduate admissions ambassador as well. Um, I'm an RA uh, resident assistant in Corbin Hall. Uh, I'm president of a cultural group here on campus called B-Man Black Male Achievement Network. Uh, and I'm also part of the Centennial Honors College. So, um, Okay, great. Well, I am going to be moderating the Q&A. So again, please, please drop your questions into the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. Um, but I think I'm going to start off just by asking you both, Derek and Lexi, a couple of questions. So Derek, we'll have you go first. Um, and just why did you choose Western? Um, so for me, Western was the only school that I actually looked at. Um, and there was a few reasons why. Um, so I, I went to a, uh, LT, Lions Township High School, it's in LaGrange. Um, and my counselor actually pointed it out because he knew that I was interested in law enforcement. And he was like, West Illinois is, is well known for the law enforcement program. Um, so I, I, uh, I'm pretty sure I came for a Discover Western here. Um, and then I came here, uh, I don't know, it just kind of fit, it was close to home. Uh, uh, at that time I did not have a car. So I was, it was a train ride pretty much there and back. Um, so I don't know, it's just very convenient. Um, I don't know, I just felt like I fit here. Um, I, I, there I uh, met some, some friends. I also came back for a uh, experience Western, which is where um, you come here, you, you live on campus and uh, you do some events with that group that came for that experience Western. So I don't know, I just kind of made um, quick friends and I'm just fit for me, so. 
Great, thanks, Derek. What about you, Lexi? Um, I came to Western, well, I was really unsure on schools. And when I, I was just kind of going around with my family when I came to Western specifically, um, my actually undergraduate admiss admissions ambassador who gave me the tour around campus, she was really involved and really intrigued me and made me feel like the campus was already my home, even though I wasn't even a student here yet. Um, and then also Western was one of the only schools in the state of Illinois that had a really good forensic psychology department. Um, so the school was kind of, it was right off the bat, like I never felt that way about a different school, but just being on campus and like feeling that homey feeling was why I chose Western. Great. Uh, and Derek, you touched on something. Um, we do have an Amtrak station right here in Macomb on the Macomb campus. Um, so anyone coming from anywhere on the Amtrak line to and from Chicago, uh, it's easy access to Macomb from the Amtrak stop. So um, Derek, for you, what do you think, what's your favorite Western tradition or your favorite Western event? Um, I would say yell like hell. Um, <laughs> that is a, a, a homecoming event. Um, and pretty much it's kind of picture like a, a cheer competition in, in a sense, like your, your, your group or team kind of makes its own little um, like chant, dance, whatever it is. Um, so yeah, there's a, there's a bunch of orgs. Uh, for me, since, since I was an RA, uh, like I was a part of the Corbin Olsen group. And the, the reason why I liked it is because usually I'm, I'm not that person. Like I don't like go out and dance. I don't no, To be honest, I didn't know what Yell Like Hell was. I just kind of got put into it. And I don't know, it, it kind of opened me up. I know because I was just, I'm not used to dancing and cheering and doing choreographic moves. So I don't know, it, it just kind of was a different experience, which is why I liked it. Cool. Yeah. How about you, Lexi? What's your favorite Western tradition? Um, that's honestly a tough question because I go to a lot of different events on campus, so I kind of experience them all. Um, but I would say one of my favorite things that like the campus does specifically is spray painting the Rocky statue that we have outside of the football stadium. Um, I actually did that my first time with my floor and then I thought it was a complete blast. And then every time I was with a group of friends, we didn't know what to do. We'd go over and spray paint the dog. Um, I took my experience Western buddies, um, we went and spray painted it. So to me, that was kind of doing that the first time was like something that was like, wow, I'm going to do this all the time now with people. Um, but that's definitely one of my favorite things. <laughs> Great. I, you know, I have never done that. I am a two time alum of Western and I have never painted the Rocky dog. Um, and for those of you who don't know, um, so our mascot is the uh, English Bulldog. We, our nickname is the Leathernecks and our mascot is the English Bulldog. We have lots of Bulldog statues throughout campus, but there's one in particular that is right outside of Hanson Field, which is our, our football stadium. And it's, it's open to anyone to spray paint at any point in time. And that's kind of a, a fun tradition here on campus. So that's what Lexi was referring to. Um, so Derek, what's the food like on campus? What are your favorite eating options? Um, the food, uh, the food is actually pretty good. It's actually not as bad as, so like my, my high school, we had a very nice cafeteria. Um, and I don't know why that was just the case. So I was kind of actually uh, expecting like worse food, but the food actually kind of matches. So uh, I would say the food is very good. There's different options. Uh, I would say my favorite option would probably be the wing night, like uh, in, in Corbin Olsen, we have like one like kind of section that rotates between like pasta, and wings, and like there's loaded baked potatoes this year. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know. I would say that it's it's above what you're probably expecting college food to be. Good answer. Yeah, I agree. What about you, Lexi? What do you think? I definitely have to agree the wings were one of my favorite things when I was in Thompson or either the wings or in Thompson they have a build your own pizza so you get to like create your own pizza and put whatever you like on it that was also my favorite but it's really good food on campus. <laughs> uh, Lexi I'll stay with you for a second um, so 
As Cam had mentioned before, the Macomb campus, it's a bigger campus in a smaller town. And then in Moline on the Quad Cities campus, it's a smaller campus in a bigger metropolitan area. So Lexi and Derek, both you're both on the Macomb campus. So Lexi, what's, what's the vibe in the community here? It's a smaller community. Um, so what's, what's there to do here? Um, I definitely think we're not just like a campus. I mean, our community as it is, it's kind of small. It's just Macomb. Um, the university does definitely build up the community as a whole. But I know for my different organizations, we've gone to like High View, we've gone to Walmart, we table, and then people from the community like stand there and they'll have like 20 minute conversations with us. Like they want to be like involved on campus life because that's what's here. It's like the major thing, like in Chicago, you have downtown Chicago. Here in Macomb, it's like you have Western Illinois. So for us, it's them wanting to get involved with us. A lot of them are do um, donators to a lot of different organizations I'm in, specifically Rockython, and they all like to participate in a lot of different events. So I think our campus and the community is very tight and close bonded. And Derek, what do you enjoy doing in the Macomb community? Um, my favorite thing uh, that I've done here in the Macomb community was uh, my org last semester. We went uh, to Spring Lake which is pretty much just a lake. And uh, we went camping and lodging. Uh, it was our organization's like bonding event. So we spent the night, I don't know, just, it was just a nice time because we were able to like live right there um, or spend the night right there on uh, Spring Lake. And it was just kind of cool to chill by the lake and have that experience. Um, and yeah. Great. Spring Lake is definitely one of my favorite spots in the Macomb area as well. Um, and I'm going to jump it over to a, a former student, Cam, from the Quad Cities, um, just to get his perspective on, you know, what is there to do in the Quad Cities area for students in particular? Well, uh, I mean, the sky's the limit in the Quad Cities, really. It's not your, you know, it's not Chicago, but it's also not a smaller town. It's somewhere in between. So if there's something, you can find something to do if you, if you want to. So plenty of professional sports teams um you know, go across the river um you know three or four museums over there um i'm used to living in the quad cities so i take it all for granted so <laughs> uh, i'm just used to everything that i'm able to do in the quad cities but i've never been like wow there's something access or do here in the quad cities so um and most of our students are from the quad cities as well um so they probably take it for granted just as much as i do um, <laughs> But um, like I said, th there's something that you're looking to do or experience more often than not, you can find that somewhere in one of the cities and the plus cities. Well, and, and one thing, Sarah, if you don't mind, I would throw in for kind of Cam's sake. I'm, I'm originally from the Quad Cities. So something I, I know our students get to take advantage of is there are two other private four-year universities in the Quad Cities. So you do have the other opportunities to connect with other college students that, that you might not get to if you are in Macomb. Great. Okay, and with that, I think that we have wrapped up our Q&A session. Um, so we will throw it back over to Scott. Awesome, thank you, Sarah. And thank you all for that wonderful presentation. I thought Derek and Lexi, if we're looking for the student experience tonight, we got it out of you guys. So thank you so much. Maybe I'll see how, how big the smile got on Derek's face when he asked about the food. I love that. <laughs> Um, so I just want to share one last thing. Uh, again, I want to thank our group for uh, sharing with us this evening. Um, and I just want to remind a couple last uh, couple minute items here. And apparently my sharing is not going to cooperate with me. Um, but we'll go ahead and just wrap it up anyways. So when we shut down here, I want to remind everybody um, that uh, once we're done, there's going to be a small survey that pops up afterwards. Ask you just a couple questions. Give us a little bit of feedback about how we did on tonight's presentation. Um, I also wanted to uh, encourage you to go back to ICAC's website um, and um, make sure that we're, uh, sorry, um, check out some of the other offerings that we have available for you. Again, we've got a couple more coming up this week, but we also have uh, multiple weeks of things out there for you to, to uh, check out. A lot of great information that we've been able to share from a lot of our, our groups. And most importantly, if what you heard this evening was interesting and exciting for you, I encourage you to reach out to these folks over at Western. I will tell you, you have a hard time finding a more helpful group at an admission staff than what you'll find at Western Illinois. So if you have any follow-up questions that you don't think of tonight and you want to ask later, please reach out to them and connect with them. Also feel free to share this presentation with them. So 
With that, again, I want to thank our entire panel for being here this evening. I want to thank those of you who join us at home watching live or in a recording. And again, uh, thank you for, for your participation. And uh, thanks for joining us. And have a great night. Good night, everybody.